Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another 7th Haven video. In today's video, I will be covering the top 5 mistakes new players make in New World. If you are an experienced player, be sure to stick around because these tips will help you out too. I'm level 28, I've been playing for about a month now and these are the top 5 main things that I deem worthy to put on this video. Like I said, this video will be super helpful and without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. Alright guys, jumping straight into the first point here. And the first point I want to make is weapon mastery. Now you might be wondering, okay, weapon mastery, why are you saying this? Why is it this important? Well, it actually is super important. So I'm level 28. I'd say I've been playing the game a decent amount. You know, I've been um, playing, I've been on, I've been grinding. Well, the thing is, if I go to weapon mastery, my fire staff and my ice, ice talent is level 9 and 11. So keep in mind the max level is 20 for these things. As you can see everything else is level 1. I was forced to start the game with a sword and shield that's level 4. Well the only reason I really want to push this on y'all especially if y'all are beginners is because this shit is not easy to get max level so if i click here there's 20 points total i have not got my rune yet which is the final ability for the fire staff and it's actually by far the most important casting a fire sword will place a two millimeter rune on the ground increasing your spell damage by 30 percent while standing in the rune rune lasts for seven seconds so it is the same thing with the ice gauntlet your last skill is always going to be the best ice ability chills targets increasing ice damage by 35 percent for three seconds so as you can see i'm almost level 30 which the max level is 60 so i'm almost halfway through the game uh, I don't know how much harder it gets to level later, but you get the point. And I haven't got either one of my runes yet. So this is important. If you're just starting off the game, I would recommend you look up some builds. We actually have a video on the Fire Staff and Ice Gauntlet max build specifically. But if I was toying around with all these other weapons, trying to level them up, I wouldn't even be close to getting the rune right now. I'm about uh, two-thirds of the way there to get my first one. And these are very important. These are always going to be your best thing. And I would just advise, look up a build or find something you really want to do and stick with it. Or you will fall behind and you will start having difficulties even killing the normal mobs when you don't have your weapons all the way leveled up. These are very important. You might catch yourself actually having to stick back to grind weapon XP specifically instead of being able to progress in the game. So this is my number one point and I want to bring this up. Make sure you know what you want to do and stick with it at least until you get to a decent spot to where you'll have no problem fighting the easy level mobs but until then find something stick with it do it and that is it for the first point on weapon mastery all right guys on to the second point and the second point is equipment load this point might not sound like it's big, but this point is huge and it affects your gameplay so much more than you could ever imagine. When I first started playing in the closed beta, I didn't even notice it was different until I noticed my dodges were different. But let me go in depth on this and show y'all exactly what I mean. So as you guys know, I am a fire staff and ice gauntlet DPS carry. So I want to output the most damage possible while being as elusive as possible. So, I run all light um, armor. As you can see, light headwear, light chestwear, light glove, light leadwear, light footwear, and this round shield barely, you know, don't, don't put me over the limit so I can wear it. So, let's dive into this a little bit further and tell y'all exactly why this actually matters. So if I go right here, it goes very far in depth on equipment load the combined weight of your equipment equipped armor and shield determines your equipment load your equipment load offers a unique dodge and other bonuses for instance i wear light when wearing light armor your dodge is a quick roll that covers a lot of distance you deal 20 percent bonus damage and healing 
I have a flat out 20% bonus damage buff that I would not get if I was running medium or heavy. That's why I am so adamant on this point and it is so important depending on your playstyle. Now I run light, my dodge is very fast. I have a very fast dodge, I can get out of there if I need to and I deal 20% bonus damage. Let's go ahead and read what medium does. While wearing medium weight, weight armor, your dodge is a quick hop. It's a quick hop, it's not as fast, it don't cover as much distance, but it's, you know, it's not terrible. You deal 10% bonus damage and healing, and crowd control debuffs you apply last 10% longer. Now this is good, like I said, it solely depends on the playstyle you're going for. I think medium would be good for like a spear, maybe a hatchet, I don't know exactly, but let's go ahead and read heavy while we're at it. While wearing heavy armor, your dodge is a slow sidestep. Your block stability is increased by 15%. So even though you dodge slower, your block stability is increased, meaning that you should be blocking, not dodging anyway. And crowd control debuffs you apply last 20% longer. So your CC is 20% longer, you have block stability, but you can't dodge really at all. Now this is obviously probably for a tank player, someone running the Great Hammer or something with all heavy armor. Now heavy armor does a lot. For instance, my light armor has a 44 armor rating. So heavy armor, maybe it's three times the amount, so it might have a 120 armor rating, making you more tanky. Obviously you get the block stability and your CC lasts 20% longer. So equipment load is very important. Always keep this in mind. Try and keep it within the boundaries of your playstyle. You don't want to go all the way up if you want to deal the 10% more damage and roll faster. So always keep that in mind. That is it, it for this point. All right, guys, diving off into the third, um, the third point is don't waste your repair parts. Now, when you first start the game, you're going to have a lot of repair parts. You're going to have a lot of armor and you're going to want to use them. You're going to want all your stuff to be, you know, up to par. I obviously you can see some of my stuff is deteriorated, but I have a total of 438 repair parts right now, which isn't a whole lot. The cap is 2000. The reason I am so avid on this is because there's no point in repairing the white boots that you have or even the green boots. I only repair these when I have to because you're going to get better gear the more you play very fast. There's no point in wasting it. I've only repaired my weapons like once. By the time they almost get damaged again, I'll probably have a better weapon by then. Now, this is super important because these repair parts will be huge later. They play a big role. I've seen people who are late game who complain that they don't have that many repair parts. So make sure you stay on top of your game about this. Another quick tip I will give in this is you're going to get a lot of items, a lot of green items, white items, blue items. Obviously, the further you progress, I would just go ahead and salvage 90% of them. By salvage, I mean you go to the item, you hold S, and then you salvage it. I can't salvage this because it's equipped it. But salvaging it gives you a little bit of coin, and it gives you the repair parts I'm talking about. So you can repair the actual stuff you're using. I'm just saying keep in mind of what you repair and just don't repair everything. There is a repair all button down in this bottom left. And I barely ever use it. I only repair what I deem worthy. And make sure you keep that in mind because these repair parts, like I said, are very huge later. And make sure you're salvaging everything. There's no point in trying to get 20 gold for the green item you got. Because the repair parts alone are more worth than that 20 gold. So always keep that in mind. That is it for the third point. Moving on to the fourth. Alright guys, jumping straight into the fourth point, and this point is make sure you use your campfire and do not use somebody else's campfire. This is very important, okay? For the sake of the video, I made sure I had no flint or no wood in my inventory. I just want to show you guys how easy it is to just go down here and make your own campfire there's literally no reason you should ever be using somebody else's campfire so first of all i'm gonna get the wood it's like five wood all right i need one more tree 
go ahead and get that. It literally takes just a second. Half the time you'll have wood and flint on you already. Flint is literally everywhere in the world. Okay, I have the utilities I need to make a campfire. I'm gonna go over here, away from danger, make the campfire. Takes literally just a second. It's so easy. There's no, there's no reason ever why you should use somebody else's campfire. Now I can craft. I can rest. Let me go and rest and get all my health. There's no reason why you should ever use someone else's campfire. And why I'm so adamant about that is because you might run up to someone else's campfire, set it as your respawn point, go dive into a dungeon or, you know, a hard area, and now you died. But, oh, wait, the person's campfire you was using, they decided to log off for the night or move theirs. Now, a campfire is going to work in a 500-meter radius of you. So... Especially if you're going against something tough, like I know these bears are going to kick my ass. I can come up, I can try and kill the bears, you know what I mean? I'm going to let it kill me. They're very, very strong. Oh no, now I died. What should I do? I give up. Now look, I can respawn right here at my campfire. The ne nearest settlement is half a kilometer away. So instead of running a whole half a kilometer, I know for a fact the campfire I just set up that literally took me 15 seconds at tops, and that's because I didn't have the materials, is right there. Now I can go right back to the campfire, spawn right here, I'm literally in the same area. Make sure you guys utilize this feature. Like I said, it's in a 500 uh, meter radius. Obviously this was a little bit over 500, so you can kind of get an idea of how far you know this whole radius right here about give or take and there's no point in using someone else's don't ever do that just make your own and make sure you use them because they're very important and they can save you a lot of time they can i mean you can craft at them you can rest get your health it's, it's super important guys just make sure you do this and that is pretty much it for this fourth point Alright guys, this is the fifth and final mistake new players make, and some even experienced players look over this. This is very important and it is literally free. So once you play the game and you reach the point to where you can choose a faction, this is where this comes in. So I chose Covenant, we are the orange group, they have Moderator and Syndicate. So if your territory or your faction owns a territory in specific, then in each town, in each settlement, there are going to be free resources literally handed out to you. So as I go down here, they have a couple in this town. As you can see, I can go right here and get this honey. They have a well right here. If you don't have water, you can just go ahead and pull the well. And last but not least, they have this food supply cart right here. These are very important. As you can see, I got a lot of stuff from that. Um, a lot of people look over this. Uh, I know in Monarch's Bluff, which is this one right here, they have an iron settlement, like literally, you know, right in there somewhere where you, get, you can get free iron ore. This is all stuff that might not be so easy to get early game, but it's literally given to you if you're in your faction's territory. This is super important. Definitely keep this in mind and definitely utilize this, especially for the fact that it's free. And that's pretty much it for this point, but I do want to add in one special bonus that I do want to, you know, tell you guys. It's how to save some Azoth. I didn't want to go and make this a whole point, but when you're traveling, every time you travel, it costs Azoth. So, like, let's say I wanted to go all the way to Bright Town. By fast travel, they have a base cost of 50, distance cost of 185, and encumbrance cost of 8. The reason my encumbrance cost is 8 is because I only have 23 weight of 250. If you're maxed out with stuff and you have all these items, you know your weight can go up a lot. If you're in a town, just put it in a storage. It literally takes a second and it is going to save you Azoth. I really just wanted to add that in there as a little bonus, I guess. I didn't think it was good enough to be a point, but definitely keep that in mind because Azoth does play a big part and fast traveling and other stuff especially late game so you want to try and save up as much as you can you can even use azoth for crafting and stuff so it's important just you know to maximize mid max what you're doing pretty much and that is the fifth and final point and that is pretty much it for today's video i really hope it helped you guys out 
and I can't wait to do more videos like this in the future. Be sure to like and subscribe if this did help you out. If you have any other comments, if you are a player that you would like to give the newbies, please let us know in the comment section below. All help is welcome. If there's a specific video that you would like Seven Haven to tackle, please auto let us know in the comment section below also. Thank you guys for stopping by. This is Basket. That's it for this video. Until next time. Alright.